All right, well, hello, everyone. This is uh, Wind Power Engineering. Welcome to this Wind Power Engineering and Development webinar, uh, Reducing Blade Repair Costs with Suspended Access Platforms. I'm your host, Paul Dvorak, editor of Wind Power Engineering and Development Magazine. Thank you for joining us. Uh, just a brief agenda before we introduce our speakers. Uh, this webinar will be available on windpowerengineering.com, and a link to it will, to the slides, uh, will be emailed to everyone who is registered. And at the end of the presentation, we'll have a question and answer session. Okay. Of course, not everyone who wanted to be uh, in attendance today could do so, but uh, you can help them learn from this uh, webinar by tweeting key points and takeaways that you think important. In your tweets, be sure to include the hashtag windwebinar. Now, after the presentation, I'll read the questions that you and the audience have submitted. And you could do that by typing them into the questions box on your GoToMeeting panel. That should appear to the right of your screen. And we'll try to answer as many as possible before the hour's up. And here's a little uh, technology, a little background at the top. But, uh, according to the company A to Z Clean Technology, the uh, global wind turbine maintenance and repair and overhaul services market, that's the MRO market, is growing at double digit rates and is expected to reach a value of about 9.1 billion, that's billion with a B, in 2013. That's up from 3.9 billion in 2008. The wind MRO market includes maintenance, repair, and overhaul of wind blades, generators, gearboxes, and other turbine components. Okay, now let me tell you a little bit about our speakers. Uh, we have Clint Ramberg and uh, Jim Langford on, online. Uh, uh, Clint Ramberg is a 15-year-old, 15-year scaffold industry veteran with extensive experience uh, in the supported and suspended scaffolding. He specializes in wind and industrial access as well as fall protection solutions. And he's held uh, operations, sales, profit leadership, and senior management roles with uh, brand services and Spider. Clint has assisted in the development and in instruction of the Piter, Spider Competent Person Training Program. He presents regularly for industrial and commercial trade associations and consults on specialized rigging and safety applications. Clint has managed large outages and turnarounds, as well as the design and installation of permanently installed facade maintenance equipment. Formerly responsible for revenue and profit realization for Spider's 10 West Region locations, Clint is now focused on the developing temporary suspended access solutions for the wind energy generation market. And our spec second speaker will be Mr. James Lankford. He is the owner and president of Lankford Company Incorporated, one of the few third generation privately owned industrial painting contractors in the nation. Jim earned a Bachelor of Science degree in engineering from Texas A&M University and has more than 35 years experience in the business. He's well versed in the administrative and project management tasks with hands-on experience in all aspects of the coding application business. He began working for the company in the shop at age 16, 1972. He moved into management, uh, project management by est and estimating by 1980. In 1995, he became the president and CEO of the company. And with that, let's begin. Clint, the microphone is now yours. Thank you, Paul. I sure appreciate the introduction. Again, my name is Clint Ramberg, and I'm the director of Spider's Wind Access Division. And it's a pleasure for me to be here today. I uh, certainly appreciate Wind Power Engineering for uh, providing this opportunity in this format. I'm excited to, uh, to be able to run through a few of the items that we have developed, the, uh, the wind access market, and uh, certainly excited to have one of our good partners, uh, Jim Langford, on the panel with me today. By way of, uh, of introduction to the topic uh, that we're, we're discussing today, I wanted to uh, Sorry about that. I, I don't know for sure what that uh, that noise is uh, coming from, but um, by way of uh, introduction to the topic that we're uh, we're discussing today, we are uh, going to talk a bit about how the use of suspended access platforms can help uh, wind turbine uh, owners and maintenance companies reduce their repair costs uh, by providing better access. To, uh, to the blades and to the towers that they're working on. Paul, I'm wondering if um, just briefly here, it, uh, it seems to not be advancing the slides. I was wondering if you might be able to help me with that. There we go. 
Uh, we do understand that as wind turbine owners and maintenance companies that there are several challenges uh, as well as several choices that you have as you move forward in, uh, in performing your work on site. And uh, we want to talk today about suspended scaffolding. Um, briefly, while we're waiting for the next slide to advance here, we tried to identify some of the key issues that you have as you, uh, as you perform uh, work on site. And as uh, site maintenance owners and, and uh, people who are, are constantly uh, concerned with these challenges, uh, you know, as Paul kind of introduced, we know that, that uh, there is going to be a, a rapidly escalating um, total volume of maintenance costs. The, uh, the quote that he gave said that it could approach into the $9 billion in 2013. Um, we have reports we've seen that, that also indicate that, um, you know, 20 to 30 cents of, uh, of a wind turbine's total generation uh, dollars could be spent on maintenance as it approaches the end of its, its lifetime. Um, as we look at, at opportunities or different options that you have to, uh, to perform maintenance on site, um, it seems like the industry has kind of uh, settled on, on a few prime choices um, that, they've, that they've had in the early development stages of the, uh, the market. Uh, one is rope access, and, uh, you know, it's limited in the, the nature of, of uh, being able to get men and equipment comfortably into site requires a, uh, a high level of skill and training by the, the uh, rope access technicians. And it's difficult to go back and inspect the uh, the work that's been performed. It, typically, you'll be uh, you'll be looking at photographs, and it's hard for a uh, a quality assurance officer to go out and, and physically touch the repairs. Um, another option is cranes. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of cranes that are used in the the erection of the uh, the wind turbines. There's also a uh, a lot of them. We estimate. Uh, many people are spending upwards of uh, $10 million a year just on access uh, to blades and towers for workers by using a crane and a man basket. Um, certainly we have some, some areas of, of concern there. Uh, several of the uh, controlling agencies like OSHA and, and some of the not-profit uh, agencies that, that work with trains and and moving men have uh, have come out and said that there are, you know, there are are limits to when cranes should be used. Uh, one of them, the European Crane Manufacturers Association, released a position paper that cranes should not be used for lifting people except where there is no alternative. And the International Power Access Federation added its endorsement to that position. And we certainly, with our history uh, at Spider, did act of providing suspended access for over 60 years. We know that uh, here in the United States that uh, OSA certainly uh, follows along those same lines and that the, uh, the, those two endorsements would be uh, pretty much in line with what OSA uh, recommends that a crane and man basket uh, be used as a last resort method of, of access and only when there's no other method that's available for multiple reasons. And then lastly, we've got um, as far as other options, we've got the lift trucks and the fact that those those types of devices, uh, as the the installed base grows, um, for the most part, they're just not able to provide complete access. Um, there's always terrain challenges and other issues that are associated with it. And so, uh, you know, we we are excited to be able to talk about the use of suspended scaffolding as an alternate to these three options. And as we do that. Um, there are several benefits to using suspended scaffolding. First of all, uh, it's much easier to mobilize. Again, I'm, I'm waiting for a uh, slide to transition here um, as we go to the, the next one. But I'll, I'll start talking about the bullet points that are on that slide. There's several benefits to, uh, to using suspended access platforms. They're easy to disassemble and transport in, uh, in pickup trucks or in uh, small uh, bumper pole utility trailers. 
They're easier to assemble on site. The component pieces can be managed by a single man and, and located and assembled um, onto the, uh, the platform as it's being configured. They're easier to operate. There's a, uh, a significant amount of user training that can be performed both on site or through a uh, local spider distributor, of which there's 25 in the, in the Americas, uh, to allow you to be able to confidently train your employees that are on site to be able to perform the installation and the operation of the equipment. So it eliminates, uh, eliminates extra people being on site. Yeah, it's a good method of access. Uh, spider has been manufacturing and selling and renting suspended scaffolding equipment for over 60 years since our company was formed in 1947. In addition, it's, uh, it's more available uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the market area. Again, I mentioned that we have 25 office locations with uh, trained professionals to help support that. And uh, in a lot of ways, it provides improved capacity for your workers and for the materials to get up to the work position. You're not uh, using tag lines or well wheels to move materials up and down to, uh, to men that are, are suspended and, and hanging in their, in their own harnesses. Um, it's a fast option, 35 feet a minute um, travel times. And it's a, uh, it's a, a very good uh, method of access uh, with a great safety record. I wanted to talk for a moment about three particular configurations that Spider has developed to help service the uh, wind turbine uh, maintenance uh, market. The, uh, for sure, the, uh, the, the highlight of our fleet is the 360-degree uh, blade access platform. We call it the 360 BAP. And the line drawing of that, that platform is shown here in the, uh, in the drawing that's on the screen. Um, this, is, this is a platform that is designed to be able to allow 360-degree access around a, a blade uh, to allow the, the composite technicians or the inspectors or the, uh, the people who are out making upgrades and repairs to the, uh, to the blade to be able to get to all sides at uh, all positions along the blade from the root all the way down to the tip. It's a platform that self-stabilizes against the tower. And when rigged in the downwind position, um, it will allow the uh, operation of the platform without the use of tag lines. It's a, uh, again, it's a modular design. It's uh, one that, that lends itself very well to being able to uh, be reconfigured into different types of platforms. As you can see with the, uh, the slide that just came up, um, the component pieces that are used in the 360 BAP are also able to be reconfigured to smaller platforms, uh, 5 foot and 6.7, so just slightly larger than a 2 meter platform configurations. These, these platforms are used quite often when a, uh, a small repair or a quick inspection are needed, uh, maybe less, um, less of a full coverage. And uh, they're, they're really designed for a, uh, a quick approach to the job site. Uh, often these, these baskets are shipped to the site in the back of a pickup completely assembled so they can be stored in the, uh, in the tool locker and, uh, and shipped out and deployed to site very quickly. It allows two men to get up and, and perform a quick inspection or a quick blade repair and uh, back down and get that turbine up and running just as, as quickly as possible. In addition, the, uh, the components of the 360 degree BAP can be configured into what we call a tower access platform or a TAP. And this configuration allows for improved access around the, uh, the tower itself. Um, both the 5 and 6.7 BAPs and the TAP are used uh, frequently for um, inspection of the tower, for recoding when that needs to happen. The, uh, the TAP configuration allows a little bit more access. As you, uh, as you can circle uh, a broader range on the tower. And it also includes the, uh, the ability to 
position itself around as you yaw the nacelle, your rigging points stay fixed in the nacelle, and you're able to that for much. Now, all of these platforms, sorry about the noise there, all of these platforms are driven by the SC1500 pound hoist. This is the, um, the largest of the, the hoist currently in Spider's fleet. It allows the use of independent um, secondary wire ropes for the and uh, it allows uh, when configured with a engineered anchor point on the platform or a dog line to eliminate the need for lifelines. That's an important feature, lifeline management. Um, when you're when you're suspended up in a windy situation, is uh, always an issue. It's also uh, important to note that uh, on the 360 platform, uh, the use of dog lines allows the operators to walk the entire perimeter without having to manage a uh, a lifeline as they circle around. Clint, you might try uh, getting off the speakerphone, okay? And, and ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we are trying to fix this uh, problem, so we're aware of it. So I apologize for the uh, inconvenience. Sure, I was uh, I was muted just prior, and it was it was doing it then as well. So I I didn't know if uh, if it was my speaker or not. But I'll I'll talk this way with uh, holding the handset. It's kind of uh, kind of uh, interesting product, and it's it's one that that we certainly feel is uh, going to revolutionize the the way that that uh, blades and towers are accessed and uh, certainly provide many benefits to the uh, the end users and to the owners on site. What we wanted to do now was to take a few moments and run through some actual site photos of uh, different projects and uh, we'll be starting with the 360 blade access platform shown here. I believe this is a Siemens 2.3 turbine with some composite techs that are, are working on it. Uh, the blade access 360 design is uh, is able to be adjusted for larger and smaller platforms. This particular um, case study shows a 13 by 5 configuration. Our standard configuration is a uh, 5 by 10, but this one in the photo shows that the uh, the long blade was extended out to 13 feet, and uh, and it allows for access on slightly larger platforms, different configurations. Um, it's something that that really, uh, as we look at the future of blade access, um, you know the the turbines are getting larger and larger, and uh, especially as we as we look at the offshore market, um, the size of these platforms are going to have to increase, and the modular design allows us to be able to make those adjustments. Rolling down to the next uh, project case study that we have, um, this is a Vestas V82 turbine. Again, it's a 10 by 5 configuration on the platform. A lot of sites require that uh, even though we're using a slack, a slack rope in our rigging, that they still have independent lifelines. And uh, certainly, you know, if, uh, if it's a site requirement that that, uh, that that be the case, we can always um, you know, use the, the independent lifelines. One thing that, uh, that's important to note is that the platforms, all of the platforms in our BAP or TAP configurations have engineered uh, anchorages on the walkthrough stirrups to allow people to either tie their, their fall protection off to that anchor or to use that as a descent point for a, uh, if they need to facilitate a self-rescue. That doesn't happen too often because the platforms have a control descent feature on them, and it uh, allows you, if uh, if the gen set runs out of gas or if there's some other interruption in the power supply, it allows you to be able to uh, control descend yourself down um, uh, to the ground and not not have to do that uh, repelling self rescue and have a platform that's stranded up on the side of the the turbine. What I would like to do is to uh, go ahead and, and uh, reintroduce my partner on the panel. Uh, you know, as a manufacturer of suspended scaffolding products uh, that are used for industrial access since 1947, Spider has had the opportunity to develop many long-term partners um, and meaningful relationships with contractors who have been using this equipment for years. 
Uh, it's my pleasure to reintroduce to you Jim Langford, and uh, Jim is one of these partners. And Jim, I, I thank you for carving out some time in your busy schedule and for joining us today as a, uh, as a panelist. Jim, uh, I know that you're working off-site and, uh, and uh, that uh, you don't have the online access. I wanted to let you know that on the screen I have your Hackberry uh, Texas project with the 360-degree BAP. And I uh, wanted to welcome you in, Jim, and see if you could tell us a little bit about the, the work that you performed on this site. And then uh, we'll just kind of have a dialogue as we go through some of these photos for the audience. Okay, Paul. Well, thanks very much for the introduction there. And I want to apologize. That annoying beep that you keep hearing and everybody involved is because I'm sitting in a building and they seem to be testing the fire and alarm system in this building, and it's really been driving me crazy. I want to apologize to everybody for that. But, it, but then again, Paul, uh, excuse me, Clint, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this seminar. Uh, this particular uh, job was very unique. Our customer asked us to come up with a solution to access their blades um, for, for some testing and repair. The very unique thing about this particular project is that, as you can see by the photos, the blade tips in the locked and vertical position were a extremely large distance from the tower. And this was one of the things that us and both Spider Staging talked about before we, before we started the project. The good news is, is we were able to bring the BAP in, we were able to adjust it, and we were able to access these, this, uh, uh, these blades. And this work was done in a really, really short time frame, saving you know, everybody involved money, man hours. And number one, it, it, it all got done in a very safe manner. So Clint, that's what I want to say. Excellent, Jim. It, uh, I know that it turned out to be a very successful project for you. I'm kind of scrolling down through the, uh, the pictures here. Um, I know that you are providing access for composite text from the manufacturer to, uh, to get up and, and perform inspection and repair. We've got a slide up that shows um, those composite texts on the platform. Uh, when, you, uh, you know, when you were out there and, and providing this access solution for them, um, you know, were there any, any other uh, indicators or, or comments that you received from the, the composite text about the type of access that you were provided? The, cop, the, the composite texts were, were very impressed with the BAT platform. They were impressed with the speed in which it assembled on the ground and the speed in which we were able to capture the blade. For example, the BAT hit the uh, project and within two hours it was able to be assembled, rigged, and within eight minutes, we left the ground and we were able to capture the blade. And I don't really think that there's any other modes or means, whether it be motor crane or, you know, either you know, man lift uh, or any other means that really could have done the job, you know, quicker and more cost effective. Like, yeah, that's, I appreciate that. So you're saying uh, about two hours from your initial uh mobilization on site to where you were ready to fly and then about eight minutes from the time you left the ground until you captured that tip and you were you were on board doing your work. Yes, sir, Clint, that is correct. Excellent. You know, Jim, you brought up another point um, I, as I kind of, when we when we introduced you, I, I said that we've had a, uh, a long uh, partnership and that, that uh, we've been a, a provider for your access needs for many years. You, your company's been in business since the 1920s. Um, you know, I would assume it's a pretty fair bet that you've used several different types of access equipment in your not only your wind turbine work, but in, in the other divisions of your company and your, your other businesses. Can you talk about the value of, suspider, uh, of spider suspended access equipment um, and your experience with, say, like a, a supported scaffold, crane, or aerial lifts for performing turbine maintenance? Well, you're correct. Our, our business with spider staging be, began back in as early as the 1960s. 
Um, and at that time, we used quite a bit of the ST-17s, which is the single-man uh, baskets, which is the fixed motor spool air-operated ST-17s. Those, those pieces of equipment have been real integral in our business for many years. They're very versatile. Um, we've done quite a few safe uh, projects with, with that type of equipment. So it was quite natural for us when it became a need that we had to do up tower access in the wind industry to get a hold of Spider to uh, help us with our uh, power climbing needs. Um, so that's what I want to say, Clint. Excellent, Jim. Thank you for that. You know, we're, um, I know you can't see as I'm progressing through the slides here, but I'm to a slide um, that shows it's kind of an important series of, of maybe the next four slides here. Uh, the first one shows the initial tip engagement, and I believe that this is a, um, this is a GE 1.5, so not quite as far away from the tower as, uh, as the last, last project that we showed. But this shows the uh, 360 BAP position at the, the tip. And what's kind of important to notice as I go through the next series of slides, if you can see my, uh, my mouse pointer move down, there's, a, uh, there's an area down here where the stabilization frame uh, has a pretty significant gap between the, uh, the platform and the tower. And I wanted to point out as we move through these next few slides, um, the difference between where the platform's at at the tip and then where the platform moves to as it positions itself up the, uh, the blade. Uh, the next slide shows the, the platform uh, fully engaged with the blade. It's uh, just at the spar section at the max core dimension on the blade. Uh, in this particular project, we needed to go past the max cord up to, uh, up to the root section. And so, you know, the, uh, the platform itself cranks along a, uh, a subframe that's stabilizing against the, the tower, and it's a manual winch that's used to drive the, the platform along the length of that subframe. In this photo, you can see um, through the, the uh, handrails here on the corner section, the subframe that's extending out uh, kind of past the, the outside perimeter of the blade, but the platform's in nice and close. This is actually at the, uh, the work location. You can see that the, the operators were within inches of the, uh, the root section of that blade, and they were about uh, one and a half meters uh, below the root section. And so it's, uh, it's quite good coverage. This last slide shows the, uh, the manual winch that's used to, to move the platform along that subframe assembly. And um, as I talk to operators that have been on the platform, they say that that winch operates uh, smoothly and uh, with very minimal effort. In fact, they, they often don't use the handle. They just kind of use their fingers to flip it along there. You know, Jim, um, we've got some other photos from uh, your job sites that are coming up here. Um, you're one of the uh, one of the few people who have actually used all three configurations of spider uh, turbine platforms. Uh, the next slide shows one of your projects, and this is a uh, tap configuration or a tower access platform. Um, and I know that you also have used the uh, the 6.7 foot uh, BAP configurations. I'm wondering, Jim, uh, with the experience that your crews have had, uh, what feedback are your field crews giving you about the equipment? Plants are giving us excellent feedback. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that, that, that we're getting back from feed in the field is that the ease of moving the platform from tower to tower, um, the efficiency of where, how we can rig these, these stages, um, uh, the comfort zone that that they that they have when they're working on the on the platforms, um, in the way that the platforms can be configured. The good thing about the tap is it can be configured in a straight configuration by simply moving a few pins and reclocking the corner pieces into a straight configuration, or the tap can be configured right into what they what we call a U configuration. Sure. Um, it's, it's, it's a simple design in that it's a two-motor, two-stirrup type design. 
uh, double cable, you know, system as you know, Clint. Um, it rigs quick. It's it, it it moves from tower to tower quick, and you know our people have had nothing but good to say about this type of tower, Clint. Good. We're looking at the uh, the slide now that shows your crews on the uh, 6.7 blade access uh, platform. How come they chose this configuration um, at the job site instead of the 360, Jim? Well, the reason that they chose this configuration is because we had to go do one repair at the root of the blade. So it wasn't really feasible for us, or I'm not saying feasible, but it, it, it was really more of a quick, easy way to get up to the root of the blade. We didn't feel like we had to rig, uh, rig uh, either the tap or, or bring in uh, the 360, what we call the big tap. Um, so we simply uh, uh, chose to use this, this uh, 6.7 um, access platform, Clint. Okay. And when you're using the uh, 6.7, I know that the, uh, the platform has to be tagged because it doesn't stabilize off the, the tower with that subframe assembly. Um, when you tag it into place, are you using the, uh, the blade capture lanyard, and does that hold you uh, very well positioned against the blade? Yeah, what we have learned is that if we put a tag line around the base of the tower, and I think you can uh, sort of see that in that, that slide at the uh, lower right-hand corner where the operator has tagged around the, the tower, and then that thing can be adjusted as they go up, um, and once they hit the root of the blade, then they can, they can either bring slack in or let slack out. Uh, uh, depending on how far they go up the blade and, and you know how close they want to get to the root of the blade. Sure. You know, Jim, when we talk about uh, about tagging and things like that, uh, as you know, spider stress is safety in all of our designs and the equipment that we manufacture. I know from our experience that uh, Langford Company also is a uh, very safe company and has some great policies for your on-site safety. Um, but we both know that safety is a key driver in productivity on site. How do your crews feel about being on suspended scaffold versus um, another means of access? Do they feel safe? Yes, sir, they do. And, you know, for example, we've been working in the wind industry now for probably going on five years, six years. We haven't had any problems or any lost time accidents, nothing, no no hits, no runs, no errors with this type of equipment. Our customers, H HS and E, is, is very happy with this type of power climbing access. Um, so really, it has been a win-win situation with us and our customer, Clint. Excellent. And I, uh, you know, I know, Jim, that you, you own equipment as well as renting equipment from our, our local offices throughout the country. Um, as a fleet owner, what are some of the key reasons that you've chosen Spider and specified us as your as your preferred method of access? Well, that's because we've had such a long-term relationship with Spider Staging. Um, you know, and it was quite natural for us to come to Spider in 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 this kind of a need. So, you know, purely that that's a very simple, you know. Um, thing for me to uh, a question for me to answer there. Um, okay. Been a good relationship. We know people within Spider. Um, um, you know, I'm a value type buyer. Um, you know, we don't just look at pure bottom dollar bottom dollar pricing. We look at uh, we look at customer service. We look at uh, availability of equipment. We looked at uh, service in the field. Uh, we know we can we can get a hold of the right people when we need to get a hold of the right people. Um, and, and that to me, that to me is the value that we get with working uh, with a customer like Spider Clint. Excellent. You know, thanks, Jim. I appreciate uh, those comments. And I wanted to uh, to ask you. I'm going to go through a few more uh, configurations and case studies here, um, and then I'm going to kind of wrap up my portion here real quick. But uh, will you stay on the line with us? Uh, we've got a question and answer session coming up, and if there is. If there's uh, any questions that the audience wants to ask of you, I, I'm hoping that you'll be able to be there and, and help us answer those, as well as if you feel like jumping in on any of these slides that I show, i just offer your comments there as well, okay? Quite naturally. I just hope that we don't have any more fire alarms here. I want to apologize for that. 
<laughs> Not a problem. Thanks. Uh, for the audience and for Jim, for your uh, benefit, I'm on a uh, case study of a five-foot configuration BAP. It's out at a uh, project for AES in Condon, Oregon. And again, I wanted to just point out that the uh, the access that you can receive um, is is complete. It gets you to the areas that you need to work. We've not found a turbine that can't be rigged with suspended scaffolding. Um, the benefits of these of these five foot and six point seven foot baths are that they're very mobile. You can see a fully assembled bath here in the back of a short bed pickup truck that the generator was in as well. You know, they are they're easy to get on site, they provide great access, and they're they're really just a, uh, a great productivity tool for getting a turbine maintained and back up and in operation just as quickly as possible. In addition to our, our standard configurations of products, Spider also has the ability to use our application engineering experience and to provide custom designs for equipment. This project in Costa Rica um, has been going now for over two years. They had a particularly small turbine, but they wanted a full 360 degree wrap. They didn't want a stabilization frame because there were clearance issues. And by using uh, the standard tools in our toolbox and the, the modular nature of the equipment, we were able to configure a platform that's easy to mobilize on site for uh, crews that are working in, in South and Central America where you know access to large trucks are, are difficult. Certainly access to cranes are difficult. Uh, as you can see, the platform is fully assembled, can be landed on the back of a small utility trailer. They were actually pulling this around on site with a uh, Nissan Murano and uh, provides great access all the way around that blade as, uh, as the workers need to, uh, to go and inspect every side of the turbine. So, you know, I think that uh, in summary, and before we, uh, we open up the question and answer section, um, I wanted to just kind of note that, um, that this is a wonderful company. We have over 60 years of experience in providing suspended access and safety solutions for people who need to work at height. We have been working in the wind industry now for over 10 years. We have 25 offices throughout the Americas to meet your need, and we have just absolutely the best designs on our, on our modular equipment that are available in the industry. So, Paul, with that, I want to uh, turn the time back over to you to, uh, to allow us to uh, take some of the questions and uh, remind everyone if there's any more information that you need uh, you can reach out to us by email or by phone at any one of our locations or at the email that's on the screen there. All right, excellent presentations, you guys. Very well done. And let me tell you, I have new respect for guys who fix blades now. Um, uh, all right, we have a number of questions up here, uh, Clint and, uh, and uh, Jim. So let's get to them. Um, uh, Jim, here's one for you. Uh, when will I use a 360-degree blade access platform instead of a 5 or a 6.7-foot version? Good question. Um, primarily, the 360 is used for blade inspection and repair. Um, that, that for me, is is what it really is designed for. The good thing about the 360 BAP now, that uh, I'd like for everybody to, to understand, it can be broke down and configured into a tap, or it could be broke down and configured into a 6.7 platform. Um, that's the really good and unique thing about uh, about about the way these stages are put together, they can be they can be reconfigured and um, and utilized in in almost any application on this tower. So I hope that answers the question, Paul. Yeah, that's very good. I thought there were three separate platforms, but uh, that they're modular, so they, they work together. Okay. Yeah. Or, yes, sir. They are. Okay. They okay. they are modular, and um, so so for example, you could have a 360 BAP, um, which is in our application was uh, two 10 foot and two five foot sections, two motors and two stirrups. You could basically take that one particular platform, add another five foot platform to it, okay? Mm -hmm. And you could take the 360 BAP, break it down and configure it into a tap platform. So you could be doing blade inspection one day, break it down, reconfigure it, and you can have a tap the next day and go up the tower. Hmm. Okay. okay, very good. All right. Hey Clint, here's one for you. 
Okay. Okay. You, you'll have to do some interpreting here, but but the the uh, viewer asks, uh, how does the 360 degree platform differ from my current system? And maybe he's referring to something from another company. Yeah, you know, it uh, it might be uh, another 360 degree platform. Many of the ones that are on the market, I think the the primary difference again relates back to the modularity of the platform. Um, and the, some of the difficulties that people may have in transporting that equipment. Some of the other um, uh, platforms don't have the ability to break down and, and be uh, transported in their base components the way ours does. Um, a properly packed full-size pickup can move a complete 360-degree bath in the 10 by 5 configuration. Um, it's, a, it's quite a large load. We certainly uh, recommend that that um, you know that that be secured well, or you know if uh, if it's possible to split the load between two two uh, standard pickup trucks, or use a a small utility trailer. Um, but I think that that's probably the the primary difference is that it's it's much easier to mobilize, Paul. If um, if the end user needs to uh, get into rough terrain, you don't have to use hoisting equipment. You don't have to have forklifts on site to assemble this. They certainly help if they're available, but we uh, we all know that quite often they're just not, or they're an added yeah. expense to the job site. So if uh, if you have men out there anyway, and uh, and you have the opportunity to move smaller component pieces and and uh, not have that forklift out there, then it's it's certainly possible. It, I mean, it offers all of the benefits of any other 360 degree platform as far as access and speed. Um, we think that there are definite improvements in, uh, in being able to mobilize that equipment and being able to reconfigure it. Uh, you know, other manufacturers can't make a, a uh, five foot or a 6.7 foot out of their, uh, out of their 360 platform. So really you get, uh, you get three or four different configurations for the price of one with this product. Yeah, I see. Okay. All right, Clint, here's another question for you, sort of a follow-on. Um, the viewer asks, uh, what if I need a higher load capacity? I think you mentioned 1,500 pounds. Uh, yeah, 1,500 pounds are the capacity of the hoists that are, are used on the 360 BAP. Um, you know, as far as, uh, as far as workable load, that on the uh, 5 by 7 configuration of the 360 BAP, that provides 750 pounds of, of light load, load capacity. So uh, as the platforms grow in size, um, you know the uh, the overall weight will will pick up. Uh, Spider is manufacturing um, for some uh, standard product that's going to be in our fleet within the next few weeks. Some lighter weight corner sections mm -hmm. uh, that will help to uh, reduce the overall weight on larger platforms and improve the capacity on the existing platforms. Um, also. Slated for down the road are some larger capacity hoists that will be coming out in our fleet that will be uh, completely uh, able to be integrated with this equipment. I see. Very good. Okay. Um, more questions for you, Clint. Um, uh, uh, the viewer asks, will this technology be suitable for offshore wind projects? You know, that's uh, that's a great question. Although we've uh, we've had limited experience offshore right now. Um, at Spider, but we do anticipate a great need for this in uh, offshore applications as that market continues to develop uh, here in North America. Our sister company, Power Climber Wind, has uh, has had some work offshore. Uh, we think that uh, you know, as the as the need for offshore maintenance um, starts to ramp up, you know, after the installed base is in place, that that suspended scaffolding will probably be the preferred method of access in those uh, those applications. You know, there's certain logistic issues that we'll have to solve for, uh, getting the equipment out there and working above water. And certainly, as we see the size of those generators, um, I've heard of some of them in the seven to ten megawatt class. That, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we'll. we'll We'll have some uh, some geography or geometric issues that we'll have to solve for. They're going to be some pretty big platforms, but um, you know, on the 360 applications at least. But certainly with our other configurations, I think they're a perfect fit for that market. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. Jim, here's a question for you. Uh, uh, how big an area would you still uh, would we, would you attempt to perform to uh, attempt to repair from the platform? Uh, and I'll leave you to interpret how big an area he means. 
Well, if we're refer are we referring to the tap or the or the bat platform? Well, he doesn't say. I would say maybe. Well, we'll, we'll tackle each one, okay? You know, that's a good question. The, the the tap platforms usually will have to be clocked. I would say probably four times, uh, three times. You know, to yaw the tower three three times to get three sixty around the uh, around the blade may be a little bit of a of a uh, of a task to try to do. Um, you know, I would say that we could clock we could clock three times and get three sixty around around these uh, eighty meter towers. I hope that answers the question. Um, if you're asking how large of area, uh, you know, depending on whether we're we're cleaning these towers, how we're, if we're abrasive blasting them, if we are power tool cleaning them, um, you know, it you know we we, we could climb the back from the from the base up to the to the uh, to the nacelle within 12 minutes. You know. Mm -hmm. It really depends on what kind of surface preparation or coating system that you may be doing. Yeah, the, uh, the, the equipment well, moves at 35 feet per minute, and I think, Jim, you have, you have a uh, 15 lineal foot configuration on your taps. Yes, so sir. that would be 15 foot around the circumference of the tower that you're able to cover uh, on any single drop or without having to reposition. Yeah, yes, sir, that is, that is correct. That is correct, sir. Sure. Okay. Let's uh, try another question. Uh, uh, does it work from the upper tower sections? Uh, do you have a rather steep cone? Uh, and what about lattice towers? All right. Uh, there's a couple questions there. Now, uh, you, you've seen the towers sort of a cone, if you wish, cone in, if you wish, uh, narrow at the top. And how, does it maneuver around those? And how would it work on, on a lattice tower? Can I go ahead and take the first part of that, uh, that question, or the second part, the lattice towers? Um, uh, this is Clint. I'm sorry about that. I should have identified myself. Uh, we certainly can rig to lattice towers. The uh, the platform uh, has the ability to, as we saw in that tap configuration, to be cantilevered so it accounts for the flare at the base. And then we can use some pretty standard rigging products that we've developed for um, the industrial uh, paint and coating and other industrial applications where we're rigging to structural steel. And, uh, and we can come off of the, the tower and be able to uh, rig to the steel lattice uh, work instead of having to necessarily come out of a cell um, to, to do that kind of rigging. And in addition, where you've got the, uh, the steep cone at the top, uh, what we typically do is when we have a platform that, that uh, needs to be utilized on a, a smaller geometry uh, tower, we'll have our applications engineers uh, kind of lay out a, a non-standard product and uh, and they'll use the modular components and piece them together in such a way that uh, that we're able to access um, something that may be a little smaller or a little larger than what the, the standard product fits. An example of that is that slide that we showed, the case study from down in Costa Rica, that's exactly what had to happen there. And, uh, you know, by using the uh, engineering engineer's experience with the equipment, they were able to uh, meet the dimensions of that smaller turbine. Okay, very good. Uh, uh, well, Clint or Jim, this question can go to either one of you. I'd be, I'd be glad to hear both of your answers. What is the maximum wind speed these platforms can be used at? Um, Jim, I, I'm not sure if, uh, I'll, I'll take that one. 11.5 uh, meters per second is what we recommend. Yes, it, uh, it refers back to the manufacturer's recommendations according to OSHA's codes, and that's what we recommend, uh, roughly 25 miles an hour. Outside of that, um, we can work in higher speeds, but it would require specialized stabilization, and uh, we would want to approach that as a, uh, as a uh, engineer type referral question and uh, make sure that we, have, we address it that way. Yeah, Paul. I want to go. I want to go in there with with Clint on that. It, it's really going to depend on the owner's uh, site specific requirements. But uh, you know, my answer would be in line with with Clint there on that one. Okay, that sounds good. All right, uh, another one from uh, both of you guys. Uh, will this 360 degree uh, blade access platform go above the max cord area? on a GE 1.5 with a small clearance between the max cord and the tower. Should I read that again? 
No, I understand that okay. question completely. This okay. is Vince, and uh, yeah, the uh, the slide that we were showing there, as uh, as we were kind of wrapping up the 360, there was a um, a case study on a GE 1.5, and that's absolutely what we did. We went uh, we went past the max cord, and uh, we we were able to get all the way up uh, to within about a meter and a half of the bolts on the root of the blade. And uh, so we were all the way into the, the full cylinder section of the blade and off of the airfoil, and we were able to clear that, um, that tower clearance. Now, I, I know that there are several configurations of GE 1.5 uh, nacelles and blades, and so we would want to uh, certainly review any one of those projects before we went out. We have a, a quick configuration form that asks for some dimensions, and it's, it's pretty simple to figure out and make sure that the equipment's going to fit up in there. Okay, very good. Hey, here's a question for you, Jim. What's the typical crew size needed to operate the baskets? On our particular site, uh, we run a four-man crew, and that is two men on the ground, one operator, and two in the nacelle. Now, that could probably be done probably with less people, but on our particular, what our particular customer wanted us to do, and it, and it was, it has a lot to do with with both project management and HS and E. They wanted that, they wanted that crew configuration. Okay. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, I think so. Hey, Paul, um, hey, uh, yeah. can I take a swing at that one as well? Sure can. Okay, uh, as, far as, as far as the uh, manufacturer's recommendation is a, a crew size of three um, is what we typically find, and that would be uh, two men in the nacelle for safety reasons and one ground crew to uh, facilitate the rigging. And um, I think that, you know, if... Uh, you would have to refer back, like Jim said, to the specific site requirements, and that's on a 360 bath. Um, but it, it really kind of applies to, to all of them, and that's that's about the most minimum uh, crew requirements that we've seen that any site will allow. I see. And, and Clint, I'd like to agree with you on that. I, I do agree that it could be done with a, uh, you know, with that size crew, um, but for, you know, with our particular customer, it was requested that we do that in, that's the reason I made that that, uh, that answer like I did. For sure. Okay. Well, apparently you're convincing some of these guys this is this is solid equipment. One guy, one viewer asks, what's the lead time for delivery of the 60, I guess that's a 6.7 foot BAP? Um, we have the, this is Clint, I'm sorry, the, we have we have equipment stocked throughout the country um, in our fleet, both uh, both new and, uh, and rental equipment um, in our branches, and it's it's typically uh, a matter of a few days up to uh, up to maybe a week, depending on how much uh, you know paperwork and submittals and rigging plans, things like that need to be developed. But as far as getting the equipment out to a site, if a uh, if an end user contractor or owner don't require any of the uh, the other submittals be developed or or sent out, um, if they're not yet developed, then we can have a equipment mobilized on site within a day or within uh, just a few days. Okay, sounds good. Uh, gentlemen, we're, we're running out of time here, so um, I want to I want to end now. Uh, if we didn't get to any questions, I see just a few there we haven't answered, but uh, we will get the, to those offline. Um, uh, I want to thank everyone uh, for attending the webcast. Uh, once again, it will be available for reviewing at windpowerengineering.com. One final message, you can follow Wind Power Engineering and Development on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So this concludes our presentation. I'd like to thank everyone for their attention. And from the staff here at Wind Power Engineering, we wish you a good and productive day. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Paul.